Hello everyone, we are group 8. Today we will present our rework market research. There are four main parts. First, what is our particular topic? Second, we will talk about our survey. Third, results from our experiment. Finally, other information about WeWork. WeWork was founded in 2010. It mainly provides flexible workspace solutions, including traditional offices, shared workspaces, and office suites with private amenities. It is operating in more than 700 locations globally in 150 cities and 38 countries. Currently, WeWork generates most revenues from its flexible workspace locations in the U.S. Since the COVID-19 exploded, WeWork reported that its physical occupancy increased to 56% in Q2 2021, better from the 50% in Q2 2020. However, the Q3 2021 result was down slightly from the 58% occupancy rate reported in June 2020. The main target we want to study is Generation Z. They are those who were born between 1997 and 2012. Looking forward, Generation Z will be the major working groups in the next 10 years. Typically, they are more focused on work-life balance, and since COVID-19, there are a prevalent trend of remote or hybrid working, which generates huge potential market for rework. So our research topic is how to increase Generation Z's preference for co-working spaces post-pandemic in 10 years. In this part, we want to figure out what factors does Generation Z value for co-working spaces. We designed an online survey and invited Cary students to give their answers. The survey contains three major blocks, background information investigation, general questions which are designed to investigate audience understanding about co-working space, and some questions to figure out potential customers' expectation on co-working spaces. Finally, we got 54 responses. Before we talk about our finds, we want to explain why we choose carry students as our audiences and what is the limitation. On the one hand, carry students are belonging to Generation Z and are potential customers for co-working spaces. On the other hand, they are easy for our group to investigate. However, we also realize that this sample has some constraints such as similar background. All carry students are business major students and most of them come from China. This is different from the real consumer groups for co-working spaces in the real life. Besides, since most of students don't have real work experience, they may don't know what they really want when they are employed and doing their work. We have three major findings. The first is many people have heard about co-working spaces, but few of them have used it. As you can see in these two graphs, in the respondents who know about co-working spaces, only 47% of them has used it. The second thing is that internet speed, office appliances, 
and meeting room are top three most valued attributes by consumers. At the same time, in our open-ended question, many responses report that price and location are also very important in their consideration process. We also calculate the average price our respondents have given in the survey. To our surprise, the average price is not far away from the real price of co-working spaces, especially when we haven't told them the real price. As you can see, the expected price is a little lower. From these findings, we have three key takeaways. Many people have heard about co-working spaces, but only half of them have been there. Companies should invest resources to boost the conversion rates. Internet speed, basic office appliances, meeting room, location, and price are attributes that consumers value most. Managers of co-working spaces should do their best to improve these attributes. For WeWork, the price of its product is a little high. A lower price may help it attract more consumers. Now let's talk about our experiment. We want to test the willingness to pay for the different traveling time to WeWork locations. Our team has set a variables to be 40 minutes and 10 minutes, which allows the test subjects to build a clear mindset of such a large difference in time. After researching online, we have found that the average monthly fee for co-working space is under $500. Thus, we have set a constraint that no input numbers should be larger than $500. The total time of data collection is 6 days, between February the 22nd and February the 28th. After collected audit responses from 75 participants, we have found that there are 22 nouns and some random words inputted in the response line. After picking each of them out, we have left with 53 workable data. With the 53 workable and reasonable data, we have generated a histogram in Excel which is shown on the right-hand side of this slide. In the histogram, on average, for a traveling time of 10 minutes, people are willing to pay $200 per month, which is $60 more compared with a 40 minutes time of travel. We have also achieved a t-test of p-value of 0 0.000048 which is also shown that time will affect monthly fee which people would like to pay. In conclusion of this test, people are more willing to pay more if the traveling time is low. The survey has shown that people are willing to pay more on the short time of travel to rework locations. Thus, new facilities should be built within the range of populated areas, preferably closer to a public transportation transit. Offering pickup services will also allow people without a car to reach a co-working space's office. Also, placing scooters inside the building entrance will accommodate and attract more customers. By doing so, it is very likely to attract more customers, and as a result, profit of WeWork will be increased tremendously. Here are some information that our team want to share with you, which might be helpful for you to understand our project. First, the average age of co-working space members are 36 years old, which means that the majority of people who go to WeWork are not Generation Z. Actually, Generation Z also have the needs for working remotely. According to our survey, they often go to a library or a cafe. They don't go to a workspace because they're not actually attracted to it. Or they might have no idea what its value is. So, 
implement a marketing research to figure out what they value is important. Secondly, before the pandemic, there are only 3.4% of the U.S. population was working remotely. After the pandemic, 16% of the company announced that they are fully remote. There should be more people be familiar with remote work and learn the benefits of the remote work. As a result, more people may choose to work remotely and try the hybrids. So we need to know that character, the value, and choosing co-working spaces. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.